In the late 1880s, boom towns were forming all over a region referred to as the Coeur d'Alene's. The towns of Wallace, Jem, Burke, Mullen, Osborne, Wardner, and Milo, now named Kellogg, were sprouting up. The discovery of gold had brought many miners with gold fever to try their luck. Many discovered gold and some found what were to be the mines that would cause the formation of many large towns throughout what is known as the Silver Valley. The beginning of the 1890s ushered in an era of hope for the future and the profits that the mines would bring both to the businessmen of the area and to the mine owners. No one could have predicted what was to happen in the following years. As the 1890s progressed, the Silver Valley and the rest of the Coeur d'Alene's became the scene of unmatched violence and feelings of ill will. Conflict emerged between the mine owners and the miners they employed over the rights of both groups. The valley during this time was a place of community and closeness. This is probably best represented by the way in which the 1890 fire in Wallace was dealt with. On July 28, 1890, a fire started in Wallace and the water supply ran out 10 minutes later. The town of Wallace burnt to the ground. The town began to rebuild immediately after the fire. Though they had numerous offers to help the rebuilding process, they would accept help from no one outside of the Coeur d'Alene's. It was noted by Bailey Avery that the Coeur d'Alene's is a remarkable example of a harmonious agreement between capital and labor, which rebound to their mutual benefits of both. A more orderly or intellectual body of men could not be found within bounds of the United States than these Coeur d'Alene miners. This observation was to be proven wrong in the next decade. The first sign of trouble was a peaceful strike at the Tiger Mine located in Burke. On December 11, 1890, the strikers got their demands and went back to work within the next week. This incident was perhaps a foreshadowing of what was yet to come. The event also brought about the first recorded mention of a miners union formed in the Coeur d'Alene's. Mr. A. M. Esler noted, the union is of one recent organization. On August 8, 1891, the miners at the Bunker Hill and Sullivan Mines, located in Wardner, went on strike. The miners demanded that the company deduct $1 from each man's salary and use it to pay for the miners union hospital at Wallace. Mr. V. M. Clement, on behalf of the Bunker Hill and Sullivan Mines, made the, made the proposition that the company would donate land and lumber for a new hospital to be built at Wardner or Milo. The miners would have to provide for the rest of the expenses. The miners refused this offer and Mr. Hammond of the company reported that the company would not budge an inch. Finally, two weeks later, the mines and the strikers came to an agreement. The hospital dues would be disposed at the miner's option and the mine would not provide a physician. 